Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's had a good week, and we're, uh, we're glad that we can be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I have uh, a problem this morning with two messages, and I can't, uh, I can't give them both. But I want to read you something. This is just a little icing before we get into the lesson. But in the book of Proverbs, and you don't have to, it's just a little bit of reading. And I, the Lord worked with me on this, but I, but anyway, I want you to read it. I want you to have a thought on it. In verse 20, uh, chapter 21, in verse 1, the, the proverb says, uh, uh, in verse 1, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Amen. And, uh, and when I seen this, I said, yeah, I remember when Israel was in captivity, old Pharaoh was in God's hand, and he didn't have enough sense to know it. But he says, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Amen. And so I want you to, I want you to think upon this uh, as, you, as you go next week and as you, the things that are going on in this world and the things that are happening, we uh, sometimes think, well, we can't do a thing in this world about it. But listen, we can do something about it. And uh, the thing is that we can pray about it and ask the Lord to turn that river that's going the wrong way into the right direction. And that we can, uh, we can praise him through, through, for doing these things. So that's, that's the little bit I wanted to get to you in case you wanted to study that. But because I know I've seen it for some reason. Or other, but in, the, in John now, if you would turn your Bible to the book of John, chapter 17. I want to make a few comments on this chapter here this morning. John 17, <clears throat> verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. Now, I want you to notice something. This glorified that he used, the word that he used, glorify, means uh, to exalt, to give honor, and uh, to worship also, and also celebration. Mm -hmm. Now, celebration, listen, Jesus Christ had been here, had been here for 33 years and a little bit, and he was homesick. Mm -hmm. He was homesick, people, there is no doubt about it, and I know that he had, I don't believe the way he's, his words come out, that he had had much contact with his father, father and son, but he had prayed to him, and he said, I've prayed to you, and I've asked this, and I've asked this, but he was homesick. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with us this morning when we when we leave our homes and have to go someplace else, and, and, a, and a good example is a nursing home. You lay in that nursing home for four or five years, and, and somebody comes in and says, yeah, well, I'm ready to go home. Well, they tell you sadly, no, you can't go. And this is the same way with Jesus. Jesus was homesick. Mm -hmm. And he said here, uh, Father, the hour has come, and, uh, and and if you know, if you remember, in Jesus' teaching, uh, he had to tell people, like uh, at the marriage, when his mother told him, him, he said, "To have a wine," and he said, "Yeah, but my time has not yet come," and he was talking about the wine being his blood, and 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 the time to come was his death. He said. And it, my time hasn't come. And then his brothers was talking to him one day and said, are you going up to the feast? He said, no, I, I don't go right now. And he said, you guys go ahead because my time has not yet come. And so everything was working around one thing, and that was his time to come uh, to go uh, to the cross of Calvary and to, uh, and to get back in fellowship or to get back in, in harmony or to get back in place with his father because he was looking so much forward to that and he he knew before he left what what great things that he was sharing with the father all of the things that he was sharing and he had to leave all of that and he here on earth knowing and looking back in his in his memory remember some of those good times and those the great times and, and perfect peace and perfect harmony with the father and here he is out here in the briar patch 
and holler, they're hollering and squalling at him and telling him and then cuts at him and spitting on him and all this. And it's, it's a complete dip, flip over change. And him also homesick as he could be. Right. And knowing that he had to come to that cross and he knew when he, he, he knew when he come to that cross that he had to die. But the worst thing about it was he had to have all of the sins of the world upon him. And he, you know, in his agony and in his crying, he cried out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And God had not forsaken him, but God could not look upon that sin right. that was on his shoulders, on his back, that he was that he was carrying with him because people, there was no other way to get those sins on anything else. They tried the animals and they tried every other way, the, the, the statues and all of this. And listen, he was the only way. Amen. And he knew this. And how sad, how, <coughs> how awful, and we so many times uh, don't even give him a second thought about what he did for us. But listen, people, he went through, he went through something that, that no man could do and, and, and survive. But he did it for our honor and uh, for his honor and God's honor Amen. and glory. And here, this is why he is coming back to Jesus, uh, to God now. And he's, he says, Father, the hour is come. Amen. Glorify thy son. And this, he says, give honor to him. And he did. He did. At the cross, when Jesus died, he defeated the devil. He completely annihilated, defeated the devil. Now, it didn't mean that he, that he stopped him from what he was doing, but listen, he took away the, the sin guilt. He took away all those things that would cause a person to die and go to hell because he took all of this upon him, and all we had to do is look at upon him, trust him for for these things, trust him for the life that he lived, and our sins is for will be forgiven us and we can be with him and with the Father and we can we can be there in all this rejoicing and all this happiness and, and purity that goes on wherever they'll be in heaven or wherever it'll be. That's where it's going to be and he's he's looking forward to it. And listen if Jesus looks forward to it, you know he knows what, what he's going to expect because he's done been there. He's Amen. done been there, and he's enjoyed the bliss of being with the Father. And so he's praying now, and he's saying to, the, to his Father uh, the, 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 the time is the time at hand, and, and, and that you also may glorify thee. So in verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Amen. So here, here, is, here is what, this is one of the things that Jesus, the main thing that Jesus came to this world for was to die for our sins and to give eternal life to as many as God had given him. And when he left, I believe it, I believe it with all my soul, that he could have told you just exactly, exactly the number of souls the church leaving there. Amen. I believe that. And listen, people, don't don't get don't get nothing out of place about this. For God foreknew all things. Amen. And, and he knew the number that he had chosen. And he knows he knows every everything about everything. And so here he said, and, and Jesus confirmed this when he says that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen. And so there is the key to, to your, your going to heaven, to know the Lord Jesus, to know God the Father, and, 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 the, and, and the Holy Spirit. If you if you know them, if you have an experience with them, and you and you and you within your heart believe that you're saved, listen, you're going to be with Jesus Christ, and you're going to be with God in heaven. Amen. And so it and 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 and, and I can't I can't I ain't got enough knowledge, enough education to tell you how pretty it's going to be, how great it's going to be. Because listen, I don't know. Right. I told my wife this morning. I said if the flesh went to heaven, they'd be the most discouraged thing that ever walked. Mm -hmm. Because this flesh, this flesh can't, this flesh cannot imagine. You're right. 
It can't imagine what's going on in heaven. It can't imagine what God has what God has done with His Son in order that our spirits can be there. And and is in all in all of the things that you look at what Jesus done and what God did for the with His Son. Listen, it don't make sense to the human flesh. It don't make sense because. Listen, this flesh does not want to give up anything that it loves. Right. It Amen. wants to keep it, and it wants to hoard it up. And so this morning, he said here in verse, uh, verse 3, that, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. And the, when he used true God the, the old, in the Old Testament and all this, they knew gods. They knew gods. And they knew the they knew the real God too. And listen, the little statues and the little things like that. But he says here uh, that in, in that the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent, I have glorified thee on the earth. Amen. And glorify is is it, and I read it already. But it is to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. He has honored him. He honored him when he put him on the when he let him go to the cross. Because he obeyed what cry of God wanted him to do. And listen, that was the reason why that Jesus did what he did, because God asked him to do it. And God said, this is the only way. This is the only, the only sacrifice that is fit for the forgiveness of sins Amen. in my eyes. And so he, he went intentionally to die on the cross of Calvary for you and me. And people, this morning, we should we should praise Him more than what we do because uh, we just this in this flesh we just cannot understand what Jesus Christ did for us and how how great a how great a thing it was. And so, in in verse four, God says to Jesus, He says, "I have glorified Thee on the earth." And of course, uh, so many times He had. He had let Jesus do things, and, and now he's going to glorify him through death on the cross. He says, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do, and that's, this is what he had to do, and that was to, to die for the sins of everyone that God <clears throat> called to him. And so he says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, the, with the glory, now listen, which I had with thee before the world was. Amen. Glorify me again. Bring me back into that fold. Help me to be back with you. Glorify me with this way. And so he said, he, which he had with him. Now notice. He says, God said, I have manifested, or Jesus said, I have manifested my, thy name unto men, which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them, them me, and they have kept my word. And I believe here he's talking about the apostles. But anyway, he says, they have kept my word. Now they have known, in verse 7, now they have known that all things, Whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Amen. And so this morning, we as God's people need to identify and be able to identify. And the only way that we can identify is spiritually the things that God is giving to us, the things that God lets us enjoy, the things that he lets us do for him. And listen, the things that he lets us do for him, we ought to shout through the top Amen. of the building that we're able and that we're qualified and that we're, that he's pleased that we can do these things. If it's no more than give a, 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 a poor man a drink of water. Listen, if we do it in the name of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, listen, that's pleasing to him and it ought to be, it ought to be a, a miracle to us that we can do it because, listen, that serving God and doing the things that uh, he would have us to do is the greatest thing in this world. We, we, this old flesh wants to accumulate, accumulate, and accumulate, but listen, we're servants. Our spirit is a servant. Amen. It's using this old fleshly body 
But listen, we as God's people, and, and we need to serve the Lord with honor, and we need to serve Him uh, uh, because we love Him and, and it's, and it's glor glory in Him. So he says, now in verse 8, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and ha they have believed that thou didst send me. And so he's saying here this morning that the disciples, the apostles, and his the followers are, he says, he gave them the word, and they believed it. And so he says, I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me. And, and again, that puts us back to the conversation that God and Jesus had before the world was. There was, a, and he told him, he told him everything that he wanted him to do. He, he told him all the words that he was to speak. And listen, and he says, I, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and I, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Now listen, he couldn't have, I don't believe Jesus could have said this earlier in his life or early in his last three years because Peter and them had to, had to be saved and believe this thing during Jesus' ministry here on earth. And so, but he says, they've done it. And, 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 and Peter confessed and, and all the others that confessed that, that, that he, is the, he is the Christ. And he says, now notice what he does for them. He says in verse 9, I pray for them I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And Amen. He, when he says, I pray not for the world, the things that the things that are of the world and 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 and, and the things that uh, are against God and against uh, what Jesus said, he says, I don't pray for them. But he says, I pray for those that you've given me. And listen, here's the here's the pretty part. And all of mine are thine, and thine are mine. I am glorified in them. Amen. And he says here, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world that he has, he, that he's to, that has received him. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that, listen, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy, joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word, and the word hath hate, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I, now listen, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou should, shouldst keep us them from evil. And so I wanted to read it, and I know it's here somewhere. And I, but anyway, these here that he's talking about, he says, I pray for them, I've taught them, and they believe. Amen. And also, here, I, 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 it's in the scripture, those that have heard them believe, have believed. And listen, those that he was talking about are the ones that listened to him. Those are the ones that helped write these words down. They were inspired of God to write these words down. And listen, not only did Jesus uh, was satisfied with the apostles and with his disciples, that that believed but listen he said he remembered also and that's where that's where god's uh come in about all though all of them that i've called those that heard them teach and preach they believed too mm -hmm. and so it it did it wasn't it wasn't down to just the 12 apostles that believed but listen we have the opportunity to hear god's word preached we have the holy spirit that will come to us and speak to us and tell us about this. And we can believe because they believe 
and they believe because Jesus told them. Amen. And so, people, this morning we've not got no reason to to worry about anything or and and doubt about things for the soul. Our worry comes in about how to keep this flesh under control and and use it to help the spirit do the work for the Christ and and for the God. And so, this is this is some of the things that I see here. Now, notice I, I see where it's at. Now, I'll read it in just a minute. They, in verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy truth, thy word is truth. Amen. Now listen, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. There's where your, uh, all your missionaries and all your people that go to other worlds and, all, and countries, that's what they're doing. And for their sakes, I sanctified myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth here's where, the, where i was talking about neither pray i for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that's you that's me Amen. that's everything that's that lived after the apostles died out that's everything that will live until jesus christ comes again those this is the ones that Jesus is praying for. And Jesus is praying for you. And how, why can he pray for you and me? He knows who the elect is. That's I, it. I, Amen. I, he, Amen. He, but he, he knows there is an elect because he said it back over here in the scriptures. And, and, and he, he is praying for those. And it's just like us this morning that we pray... Uh, and we try to pray for those that are lost. We have to, we try to pray for those that are sick. And listen, a lot of them we don't even know by name. But listen, we can pray for them and ask God to, he knows them, and, and, and ask him to help them and to be with them. And it's the same way here with Jesus when he was praying. And he prayed uh, for these. Not, he didn't pray for them alone, but he for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And then on verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, and that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Amen. And so again, again, our belief and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as the the true the true Christ. And we believe it also honors him. It also glorifies him for us believing in him. And then he can he can tur turn around and and uh, glorify the Father because the Father sent him. Amen. So uh, and, and it's, it's it's a wonderful thing. I want I want to show you one thing if I can find it right quick here. I read it uh, just uh, just a little while back about how the same works with with uh, uh, Jesus in Jesus in, in the Father and me, we in the Father. I, if I can find it, I'll, I'll read it for you. If I can't, well, I'll just, uh, I know I marked it. But anyway, uh, just bear with me just a minute. And I'll, uh, I'll try to find it. Uh, John 14, yeah, I think. 14, 20. Yeah. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father. That's in John 14, 20. And ye in me, and I in you. Amen. Now listen, that puts you to the place where that you cannot do anything on your own. You're not your own. You're bought with a price, the Scripture says. And he says, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. So listen, that's a double whammy, a triple Amen. whammy. And listen, he's, he speaks of being in, the, in his hand and all this. Listen, we, we, we have got salvation. We are locked up with the Father and with the Son, and we're we're contained. Mm -hmm. And the devil cannot 
the devil cannot shake that loose. He cannot, he cannot touch you. And the only thing that you need to worry about is this is to do what the, the Lord Jesus Christ and what the scripture says and what the Holy Spirit tells you because again I say this and it's very important to me and I, it should be to you the Holy Spirit speaks to my soul Amen. he does and a lot of people oh, you're, you're this you're that but listen I know what I know and I know that he through the through Jesus Christ, he, he speaks to me because, listen, God said to the disciples, I go away. And that was when he was fixing to be crucified. He said, I go away. And, is it, and it is expedient for you that I go away. Mm -hmm. And if I go away, I will send you the Holy Spirit which is with the Father. So, Jesus, while he was on the earth, the Holy Spirit was working, but he was with the Father. Now that Jesus has went back with the Father in heaven, he has sent the Holy Spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit that tells you, hey, you're not supposed to steal. You're not supposed to use foul language. You're not supposed to murder, and all of these things. That is... That is the one that come in and has made its abode with your spirit and is speaking to you from time to time. If, if, and listen, if, if he's, well, I'm going to say this, he speaks to me that way. And I, if, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't speak to you in that way, listen, you need to get a little bit closer to the Lord and pray because it, 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 it's that way with me. And so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not no different than anybody else. I'm just made out of old flesh, and you are too. Right. And so uh, if I'm, if my soul has my soul has been saved. Amen. I know that. And uh, if, if your soul has been saved, he will speak to you. So here again, we'll, we'll get back into our lesson again in just a minute here. I'm going to read just a little bit. Here. In verse 22 in uh, 17, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Let me see now. And yeah. I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. And so this glory, this glory, you should have it. You have it. If, and you need to let, you need to release it if, you, if you've got it. And, and because I, I thought this morning, his brother... Larry was talking about uh, coming here and going away empty. A lot of times, a lot of times when we come, we have our bucket, but the lid is on it. And we go away just as dry as a woman at the well when she, she left her bucket. And, 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 and we don't need to do that. We need to, before we before we get to church, before we ever start, we need to be in prayer that the Lord would send the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that he would speak to our souls and, and help us to go away full and rejoicing. Because, hey, uh, and I've heard a preacher talk about, this is the gas up, gassing up station. Mm -hmm. This is the place where that you get the fuel to run you for another three to another seven days. And you got a terrible incline all the way. And you're gonna you're gonna need you're gonna need some fuel. Amen. You're gonna need some of God's word. And listen, this should be used every day of your life. If if there's any way in this world that you can find time, and you need to find time to study just a scripture or two, listen, the Holy Spirit will take that and use that. And, and he will help you through that day. And that's the, that's the high test stuff you put in your gasoline every day. Amen. That'll, get you, that'll give you that boost to get up that hill, people. And this may sound stupid. It may sound crazy. But listen, that's the way it works. Amen. And, and we sometimes we get halfway, and man, and we just love down. Well, the best thing to do is get you a little extra uh, charge in your fuel and come to the God's Word and read some because uh, it's there. Amen. And here, and that's the reason he wrote it. Now, notice this, and I'll, I'll be through in just a minute. 
And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Amen. And so God loves you exactly the way he loves his son, Jesus Christ. And listen, he asked his son to do some things for him, to come to this world and die, and to tell others about him. And listen, I believe that you'd be much happier if he asked things of you, that you would do them. And don't, 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 uh, don't fail him. If he, if he asks you to do something, do it. And I guarantee you, you'll come away as, uh, in a better condition than you were. Because he said, he said this, that there. And he says, I, I am them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in what I did tell them. Now, listen to verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. Amen. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. And that should be our desire also, is to declare God's name, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. And so, again, this you see this this uh, three-way thing with I'm in the Father and the Father and, and, and you're in me and, and we're in the Father. This is, this is what he's saying here. I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. So this morning, God's love uh, has a desire to be, be, be in you in a greater way. And I think, it, I think that sometimes we, we uh, don't understand it like we should. And sometimes the Holy Spirit has to reveal things to us. And I think that He, he reveals to, to you that God loves you. Amen. And that Jesus Christ died for you, and He loved you, and He loved the Father, and He's obeyed the Father, and uh, the Father has chosen you as His children. And uh, if you're not chosen, you need to be uh, much in prayer and, and asking Him to enlighten your heart and tell you what you need to do. So that's our message this morning. We pray that. Uh, it's been a blessing to you, and I hope that uh, it will encourage you to just come away. Thank you all. Amen.